Welcome to the specialty night and limited visibility diving. Whether it's day or night, limited visibility can be an adventure. Night and limited visibility diving open up a new world of diving experiences. This program covers practical information about planning and conducting limited visibility dives. The program will provide you with the skills to make limited visibility dives comfortably and confidently. Our goal is to prepare you for your adventure and make sure you have a good experience. Diving in limited visibility can mean different things to different people. To some, it's diving after dark with lights designed to go underwater. To others, it's diving in turbid water water without spectacular visibility. Whatever your goals are, diving in limited visibility is not difficult, and it can be as much fun as diving in clear water if you develop the skills, desire, and proper attitude. Diving at night is considered limited visibility. Because of the darkness, your vision is confined to the illumination capabilities of your lights. Actually, the water itself might be crystal clear, but without lights, there would be no visibility at all. The factors creating limited visibility at night are readily apparent. But the factors creating limited visibility during the day are more varied. Before you learn to dive in turbid water, you should first understand what causes it. Essentially, turbid water is created by particles suspended in the water that block your vision. Water motion is a major contributor to suspended particles. Currents are an obvious movement of water. Tidal changes can move massive amounts of water and affect visibility adversely for similar reasons. Visibility can also become limited by inexperienced divers not practicing proper neutral buoyancy. Without good neutral buoyancy skills, divers can easily agitate muddy and sandy bottoms with their fin and hand movements, requiring some time for it to settle back down. Kicking coral with your fins or touching it also inflicts harmful damage, potentially killing the coral. The kicked up sand also has a harmful effect, slowly suffocating the coral as it settles back to the bottom. Conserving the underwater environment and preserving visibility are excellent reasons to strive for neutral buoyancy at all times. Ask your SSI dive center or dive resort about the SSI Perfect Buoyancy Specialty Program. The skills, knowledge and techniques for diving at night and in limited visibility water are similar, though night diving requires the use of more specialized equipment. Therefore, in this video, we will concentrate mainly on night diving and only cover the differences of diving in turbid water. Night diving is a natural extension of a diver's activities and can add a rewarding and interesting aspect to the sport. Night diving offers the opportunity to see fascinating nocturnal animals that daytime divers may never experience. While night diving is not complex, it does require specialized equipment, proper dive planning, and a thorough understanding of the conditions that diving after dark presents. While diving at night, the most obvious need is for a reliable source of light. Dive lights are not only waterproof, but are pressure resistant and O-ring sealed. Water resistant flashlights commonly found at non-scuba related stores may be okay to use in a rainstorm, but they are not dive lights designed for going underwater. The increased pressure of scuba diving can force water inside of the light and at depth may cause them to implode. Therefore, only use a dive light that is recommended by your professional SSI dive center or dive resort. 
The well-equipped diver will carry three lights, a primary light, a smaller backup light to the primary, and a locator light. Lights with strong reflectors and adequate power supplies are considered primary lights. They should be able to illuminate an area underwater the same size and brightness that a good flashlight would on the surface. This may sound like a simple task, but due to the density of water, the primary dive light requires a brighter source of illumination and a greater power supply than a surface light. Dive lights come in many different styles and configurations, but they all have the same basic power source, batteries. Batteries can be either non-rechargeable or rechargeable. SSI recommends the use of rechargeable dive lights over their non-rechargeable siblings. Such lights can be recharged literally hundreds, if not thousands of times, which conserves the environment. For a secondary light, consider a smaller light, which can fit conveniently into your BC pocket or hang from your wrist. The night diver should also be equipped with a locator light or chemical glow light. In case of light failure, the locator light will help your buddy see you while you switch to your secondary light source or return to the surface. Attach your locator light to your cylinder valve with a small nylon line or use black electrical tape to attach it near your air delivery system first stage. Chemical glow lights, which may be used as locator lights, are plastic tubes with a glass tube inside. When the plastic tube is bent, the glass inside breaks, releasing a chemical that mixes with the tube's contents, producing a bright glow. If your light fails while on the surface, locator lights can be seen for some distance and will aid in diver recovery if required. Reassemble the light, making certain that O-rings are in the proper position. A misaligned O-ring may cause leaks. For more information about caring for your lights and other equipment, ask your SSI dive professional about the SSI Equipment Techniques Program. Lights should also be equipped with a lanyard. This will prevent the loss of the light should it accidentally be dropped. It also allows the light to hang from the wrist when both hands are needed. Another piece of equipment you should have is a high-quality compass. The three-dimensional underwater world is generally an unfamiliar place, and it is easy to become disoriented, even in optimum conditions. On a night dive, where all sense of direction can become confused, a compass becomes vital. If you are uncertain in the use of a compass, it is recommended that you enroll in the SSI Navigation Specialty course. Always remember that your equipment should undergo regular maintenance performed by your SSI dive center. This is particularly true in night diving, since it is considered an extreme diving condition. Diving at night or in limited visibility requires total preparation because there is little room for error. This means your equipment must be reliable and trouble-free and you should be in the right emotional and physical condition as well. Preparedness requires careful and thorough planning so that you can anticipate and be ready for any potential problems. Because the experience is sufficiently different, it is by far best to choose a night diving site with which you are thoroughly familiar, preferably when you have dived in the day. When it is not possible to pre-dive a spot, buddy teams should make a thorough pre-dive orientation during the daylight hours. If diving from shore, your plan should include entry and exit points, possible hazards, such as currents or hidden lines, and major topographical features that will help you orient yourself underwater. The water conditions should also be taken into consideration. 
night diving can be a disorienting experience, so water with a high content of silt, plankton algae, or turbidity should be avoided. Pre-dive planning is especially important when night diving. Divers must agree on emergency procedures before the dive. A thorough knowledge of your buddy's total diving system should be part of this. In case of an emergency, you should be able to locate your buddy's weight release mechanism, alternate air source and BCD inflator in the dark. Agree in advance on the general direction or compass heading of the dive. Maximum depths and minimum air pressure should also be set. It is recommended that night divers use the rule of one-thirds, in which one-third of the air is used for the dive out, one-third is used for the return trip, and one-third is saved for emergencies. Be sure that as buddies you are using the same sign language. A slate is also very useful for more difficult communication. Be sure to discuss a lost buddy procedure before the dive. The problem of buddy separation is made more difficult at night. Night and limited visibility diving do not require much more preparation than other types of diving, but it must be thorough preparation. It just makes sense that when your vision is limited, you should take extra precautionary steps. This means making a complete dive plan that includes selecting an appropriate dive site for your ability and diligently preparing yourself and your equipment. With planning and preparation, you can enjoy the wonders of night and limited visibility diving. When night diving, the first step is to set up the surface lights. Since it is very difficult to see the exit point on a dark shoreline, it is recommended to place a light or strobe at this location. Some sites may even have a permanent shore light. The exit light must be able to be seen from long distances and provide enough light for entry, exit and the assembly of your total diving system. It is critical not to use your primary light while dressing and preparing equipment, especially if your light is a rechargeable. You will need the full charge for the dive. This is why arriving at dusk or bringing suitable surface lights is so important. When boat diving at night or in limited visibility, a stable descent line is very important. A line provides a reference to measure your descent and ascent rate. While there is still some daylight available, attach the light source to the line so it can be located in the dark. If you are shore diving, you can also attach a light source to a dock or other underwater landmark as a reference point. Be extra careful in the assembly of your total diving system, making sure it all functions properly. Also, double check your buddy's equipment. While these steps are important, they are even more so at night. A loose strap, for instance, may be seen and corrected during a day dive, but the likelihood it will be noticed at night is greatly reduced until it causes a problem. When diving from a boat, descend with the line between you and your buddy and with your lights facing down towards the bottom. This should prevent a heavy landing on the bottom. Confirm your direction before heading off and prepare yourself for an outstanding array of new nightlife. To help avoid vertigo, monitor your instruments more frequently than during day dives. When diving at night, it is wise to follow an old pilot's rule. Never trust your senses, only your instruments. Should you need to show your buddy something, catch their attention by tapping your cylinder and waving your light at them. To communicate, shine the light on your hand so they can see the signal or use some special lamp signals. OK, circle with the lamp. 
Attention. Wave with the lamp or flash with it. Never point the light beam directly at your buddy's face. When it's time to ascend, check your compass heading to help you relocate the exit point. When boat diving, look for the light source attached to the ascent line. Ascend with the line between you while pointing your lights toward the surface. Keep in mind that ascent rates are difficult to judge, so carefully monitor your instruments and don't forget your safety stop at 5 meters or 15 feet for 3 to 5 minutes. After reaching the exit, be careful so as not to lose any equipment. This is sometimes easy to do in the dark and is another good reason for a bright light. When you're ready to leave the site, be a conscientious diver and leave it as you found it. Pick up your equipment and trash. To become a complete night and limited visibility diver, there are a few additional considerations you should know about. Some are special situations, such as lost buddy, light failure, and relocating the boat or shore. The rest are advanced skills, such as buoyancy control and navigation. Knowing how to handle the special situations, along with practicing the advanced skills, will make you a more confident and comfortable diver. During the dive, be especially careful to stay off the bottom and avoid activity that may increase the water's turbidity. This will also help avoid damaging the environment. The techniques for diving in turbid water are very similar to those for night diving. The challenge is largely psychological. A positive attitude is crucial to your enjoyment of limited visibility diving. Unlike night diving though, dive lights do not improve visibility on turbid water dives. To a large extent, turbid water is caused by suspended particles in the water. This is called scatter. By shining a light on scatter, the suspended particles brighten, which makes the visibility worse. Therefore, the only reason to take a light is to restore color at depth. In limited visibility, you cannot rely on natural navigation alone. It's simply too easy to become disoriented. During the dive, use your compass as a directional reference. It is easy for buddies to become separated, so stay together close enough to touch or even hold hands. Should your primary light fail, get your buddy's attention and let him or her know. Remember, you should be close enough to touch your buddy. Use his or her light to aid in the retrieval of your secondary light. Once it is turned on, you may either leave the primary light around your wrist or secure it. The decision to continue the dive will depend on the capabilities of your secondary light, the relative conditions of the water, and the confidence of the buddy team. Generally, three lights for two divers are fine. Two lights for two divers are marginal, but one light for two divers is unsafe. Without a light, it is completely unwise to continue the dive. More than likely, there's good limited visibility diving close to you. Night diving offers sights unseen during the day, even in the most familiar daytime spots. Limited visibility also offers plenty of fun and excitement. Most lakes, rivers, and coastal waters offer diving adventure in perfect conditions, usually much closer to home. Divers with the desire and advanced training to dive in these conditions have opportunities to expand their diving sites as well as their diving days and nights.